Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to cover a few questions today off the mathematical knowledge portion of the ASVAB. Now remember, the mathematical knowledge portion is not so much word problems as it is straight mathematical content. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. Number 16 says a triangle has a base measuring 12 centimeters and a height of 12 centimeters as well. What is its area? So when you are looking at a triangle, the formula for area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. So this is what we're looking at here. In this case, they said that the base, the bottom, is 12, and they said that the height was also 12. So that means we need to do one half times that 12 times the other 12. Well, it's easy to, because it's commutative, and you can do it in any order, to first off divide one of these by this 2. So if I do 12 times 1 half, or 12 divided by 2, that's going to give me 6. And now we need to multiply that by 12. Remember, no calculator here, so how do we do this easily in our head? Well, 6 6 times 10 is 60, and 6 times 2 is going to be 12, and 60 plus 12 is going to end up giving me 72. So this answer, multiplying these three together, is going to be 72, which it looks like is option C. So number 17 says to simplify the following expression, and it gives us this guy over here. Now here's the deal. When you're dealing with numbers and exponents, if you're multiplying and dividing them, as long as they have the same base, you can combine them together. If you're adding and subtracting them, then they have to be exactly the same type. So for example, an x squared can only be added to another x squared term. So in this case, we're going to probably have two different terms here, because this guy has x x's, this one has y's, so there's no way to actually combine them. That can be confirmed when we're looking at our options, you can see every single one has two. But like I said, multiplying, we can combine them. So let's take a look at this first term here. We can combine the numbers out front first by just multiplying. Because it's commutative, we don't have to do it in order necessary. This is just 3 times x squared times 7 times x to the 7th. So 3 times 7 is going to give me 21. Now, the rule states that if you have two uh, terms with the same base, so in this case x and x, and they're being multiplied together, you can add their exponents. That's called the product rule. So you do 2 plus 7, telling me that this is actually x to the ninth power. Now we're going to do the same thing over here with this guy. So we're going to have the plus for the in-between, but 2 times 9 is going to give me 18. And then, like just like before, y to the third, y to the twelfth, being multiplied means we can add those exponents. So 12 plus 3 gives me 15. So this should be our final answer. Let's take a look through our options. I see the 21x to the ninth here, and that also says 18th y to the 15th. So we're good to go. It looks like our answer here should be D. So number 18 says, if x over 3 plus 27 is equal to 30, what is the value of x? So this is essentially a two-step problem, so just solving some basic algebra here. Our first step is the opposite of adding this 27. Usually if you have a number attached to the x by multiplication or division, that's always the second step. The first thing you want to do is get rid of any easy adding or subtracting you can do right off the bat. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and subtract that 27 from both sides because that's the opposite of adding. It cancels out over here, and anything I do on this side of the equation, I have to do on this side of the equation. So 30 minus that 27 is going to give me 3. So now I have x over 3 equal to 3. A lot of times they do questions like this because kids see, hey, there's a 3 here, 3 here, they cancel out, and I'm done. In this case, it's actually the opposite because we are dividing by this 3 right now. So the opposite of dividing would actually be to multiply each side by 3. So really, we're going to do 3 times 3 over here and multiplying by 3 will cancel it out over here which means we're going to be left with x equal to 3 times 3 which is 9 so it looks like our answer today should be c Number 19 on the ASVAB says, what is the slope of a line with points A, 4, 1, and B, negative 13, 8? So in this case, we're looking at two points, 4, 1, and negative 13, 8. Now we got to find the slope of the line. Well, if you have y equals mx plus b, the m is always our slope, and that's basically our rise over run. So it's how much you go up and over on your line each time. But in this case, we're given two points. There's another formula for slope that is your rise over run formula, and it's when you do your second y value minus the first value 
divided by your second x value minus your first one. So in this case, this would look like our second y value. So the second number is your y value. The first number is your x value. In other words, this is the x-axis and the y-axis number. So looking at here, we have our y2 would be 8 minus our y1 would be 1. Over, we have negative 13 for our x1, or x2, and we have 4 for our x1. So if I go ahead and simplify this out, we're going to do 8 minus 1, which is 7, divided by negative 13 minus 4, which is going to give us negative 17. Now remember, if you have a negative, you can just pull that out front. If you have a negative on the top and bottom, they will cancel out to become a positive. So our final answer here should be negative 7 over 17. So if I look at my options here, it looks like that is option B. Number 20 says, if x is 20% of 200, what is the value of x? So how do you find the percent of a number? Well, the way you find a percent of a number is you take the decimal form of that percent. So in this case, 20%, we move the decimal point two times to the left, and that gives you the decimal form of that percentage. So this would be 0.20. And you take that decimal form and you multiply it by the whole. So in this case, we're going to be multiplying it by 200. And once you do that, that will tell you 20% of the 200. So let's go ahead and go. We got 2 times the 2, which is going to give us 4. And then we have to count off our zeros. So in this case, I have 1, 2, 3 zeros. 1, 2, 3. And last but not least, when you're multiplying with something with a decimal like this, however many numbers you had after the decimal point is how many you include down here. So in this case, I'm going to be moving the decimal place two times to the right. So one, two. So this final answer should be 40. Now, that is going to be our answer, but just looking through some of the other things here, the 2 times 2 being 4 gave us a hint right off the bat that that was the only option, but there are some other shortcuts you could have taken here as well, such as 10% of 200 would have been 20, and this is double that, so that would have given us 40. There's lots of different ways you could solve this question, but I wanted to show you the general way to find a percent of the whole. So our answer here is A. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today, but remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ASVAB.